Did you see that? See what? So, here we are, at the end of all things. During these videos, we've discussed the main games in the Prince of Persia franchise, but there's still some odds and ends to cover, as well as where the franchise currently stands. It's not great right now! First off, there is one more game Ubisoft put out around the time of Warrior Within that I felt didn't really belong in any given episode, but let's give it its due here. Battles of Prince of Persia was a DS exclusive that took a totally different tack than any other game before it, um, or since. And I mean vastly different. I've booted this up a total of three times and tried my damnedest with each subsequent attempt to get farther than last time. Timeline wise, it inserts itself in between Sands of Time and Warrior and revolves around a series of skirmishes in and around Persia. India, and the fictional kingdom of Arsura, er 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 as well as connecting a few threads from the other games, specifically highlighting Farah's brother, Kaleem. That being said, this is a very different beast as it boils down to a turn-based military sim that relies on a deck of cards to control your main actions. You look at the scenario, place your units, and hopefully make the right decisions and moves to win the battle. It's more akin to an Age of Empires game than say, Fire Emblem in, in complexity maybe? Suffice to say, this, this is not a game for me, but others will surely enjoy it. It's pretty good, honestly. <laughs> and I will give polite but unenthusiastic applause to Ubisoft for doing something totally out of left field here. This is a gameplay style that's, you know, at least thematically appropriate within the context of the pop universe, even though I still think spinning off a platformer into a military sim is, um, a bit of a stretch. While sales numbers remain obscure for Battles of Prince of Persia, it's safe to say it didn't do all that well, as Ubi never returned to this type of genre for the series, and reviews were fairly middling at the time. But if this type of game peels your banana, you know, give it a shot. Yeah. Now, almost five years after Sands of Time release, Jordan Mechner returned to the franchise he created with the publication of Prince of Persia, the graphic novel in 2008. This was a standalone story that had no relation to any previous game or even the motion picture and was written by Mechner, A.B. Cena, and illustrated by Fam Lo Yuen and Alex Pouvliand. This was more of an introspective, nuanced narrative that follows two different princes in two distinct time periods that share the same adventure. We won't go deep into story details here, but this is a fantastically charming tale that has a unique voice amidst all the swords and platforming and go 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 ness of video games. If you are a fan of the Sands of Time aesthetic and tone, it's a really good companion piece to that since Mechner wrote both of them. While we're on the subject of written works, we still have one more to cover. Prince of Persia Before the Sandstorm is a comic prequel to the Disney live action movie and again was penned by Mr. Mechner. Handling the artwork duties on the covers of these comic books, however, is the classically trained master of his craft, Todd McFarlane. I don't seem to recall your name. Todd McFarlane, yes, I, we've met before. Yeah. Now, as awesome as that is, it also comes off as the most random pairing of all time. If I could point at one artist in all the world that screams Prince of Persia, it would not be taught. The kids like change. The kids like the dark, moody mm, stuff. I mean, they seem you to. Know? The only person that it would not be more is, of course, I fell. The interior art is handled by a variety of different artists, which is appropriate since it's an anthology series that follows a few different tales being told from various NPCs about their run-ins with Jake Gyllenhaal's Dastan. 
These characters are facing execution, and they're trying to buy themselves more time by regaling their jailer about how their lives were changed in unique ways. Considering the cartoonish action of the movie, and the participation of Spawn himself, it's a surprisingly grounded tale that fleshes out the selflessness and heroism of the movie's central character. If you are looking for a more fantastical take with sand powers and monsters and shit, you'll most likely walk away disappointed. Still though, a unique curio for collectors and fans of Prince of Persia. Speaking about being disappointed, the movie! Now, Making a major motion picture was a lifelong dream of Jordan Mechner's, and at the end of the day, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time is a serviceable popcorn film. However, this was being pegged to be the next mega blockbuster in the vein of Pirates of the Caribbean. And yeah, it wasn't that. I, however, was hyped beyond belief. Mechner's working on it? There's a competent director who helmed like a Harry Potter and st the, the money and backing of Disney? H how can this go wrong? Let's find out. Honestly though, commercially, Sands of Time was the most successful video game movie of all time, until it was dethroned by World of Warcraft and the upset avians uh, adaptations from six or seven years later, but that still wasn't enough for Disney to pursue the franchise further. Yeah, don't press your luck. The spine of the tale here really is an adaptation of the game, with some things obviously drawn out, with added multiple siblings, uncles, assassins, and ostrich chases thrown in for good measure. It's an even more light-hearted affair that loses a bit of the mystical underpinnings and atmospheres of the games, overstuffing it with a much larger cast of characters and random crazy crap happening just to bloat the runtime. I think Jake Gyllenhaal does a pretty good job, all things considered. He does have that likable roguish charm as displayed in Sands of Time or even, you know, Pop Zero. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Now, despite his costume being an almost carbon copy of his Warrior Within ensemble, he thankfully doesn't portray the prince as some desperate, bloodthirsty maniac. I also think his backstory is oddly appropriate, as he started as a street kid who wasn't natively from Persia and was adopted into the royal family after displaying enough guile and bravery to impress the king. This is at least better than showing us this guy and trying to convince us that yeah, this here is ancient royal Persian descent. The other members of the royal family, however, fare far, far worse, including uh, this dude, and that guy, and wow, really? Gemma Anderton plays the fairest stand-in, and while I'm not the biggest fan, she plays a stuffy princess adequately, but I would have preferred a variety of other actresses to fill this role in her stead. The solution would be to kiss me and then kill me. I also feel that if this had come out a few years earlier, it would have been a bigger success, as 2010 was not a banner year for the pop franchise, as we all know. Still though, it's incredible when you think about this regardless. What started as a super simple game from 1989, built on rotoscoped animations of a young man's brother hopping across logs, and it spawned into a summer tentpole theatrical film that went on to make over $300 million worldwide. No matter what you think about the quality of the film, that's an amazing accomplishment. It turns back time. Now, if we really want to be completionist, I suppose I have to mention the bevy of mobile titles that came out around the pre-smartphone days. First, we have Prince of Persia The Two Thrones, brought to us by the masters of phone game sleaze, Gameloft. However, this was back in 2005, so it uses sprites, has no mini buys, and is just a slower, clunkier 2D Two Thrones, I guess. Here is footage of it. Next, we have Prince of Persia, you know, based off the 2008 console game, of course. Honestly, this looks a little better. It seems to play faster, has an improved 2D artwork and backgrounds, and uses Elika as a second playable character. Not half bad. I wish I could time travel back to 2008 and just have a shitty phone to play it on. Now, not to be outdone, we also have Prince of Persia The Forgotten Sands building off what we've already seen, and even though this game is just 8 years old, it's still stuck to those 2D trappings, which is kinda cool. 
The Prince has a brand new design here, and I like it a lot. Again, I wouldn't mind giving this a try if I could use a controller, but unfortunately all these games have long been since delisted, so yeah, not happening. Finally, there was a strangely competent port of Warrior Within that was released on smartphones and tablets also around 2010, which apparently was rated quite highly. Like all the others, this has been wiped from the iOS and Android stores, so I've never been able to try it, but fuck me, I, I'm not playing Warrior Within again, no, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Now, it's been eight years since we last had any new entry into the series, and honestly, while I complain about this every chance I get, considering the sales of Forgotten Sands, I still can't say Ubisoft are wrong for letting the franchise cool. But they are very big wrong for taking proposed Prince of Persia projects and turning them into Assassin's Creed games. What do I mean exactly? Well, in 2013, Climax Studios, the developer responsible for Silent Hill Shattered Memories, Origins, and the bafflingly good Ghost Rider game, pitched a 2.5D Prince of Persia project to Ubisoft, and two years later, it got turned into the Assassin's Creed Chronicles trilogy. These games, although competent, I mean, were forgettable. They had to adhere to the AC mythology and we're just more faceless gray spin-offs in a time of dozens of faceless gray AC spin-offs, projects, and media. This would have been a perfect opportunity for Prince of Persia to have a safe, cost-effective entry made by a third party that would have stood out more with its fantasy-based world, unique art styles and locations, and but nah, more Assassin's Creed, just, just bump them out, bump them out. I will totally admit that having two AAA 3D platforming series that primarily take place in the ancient world is not the best idea, and that's why I think Pop should return to its roots and run on a beautiful engine that excels at rendering gorgeous 2D artwork in a three-dimensional plane. Sadly, Ubisoft doesn't have such an engine. Oh wait, it does! The UbiArt engine, responsible for powering a handful of great titles like Valiant Hearts, Child of Light, and two Rayman games, and that's it. It's been five years since Ubi has last used this engine on anything new, and I can't think of a better candidate than a new prince. Make it 2D, give it a unique visual style, some decent writing and voice acting, make, make it a sequel to Pop Zero, or its own original thing. Hell, why not implement Metroid-style exploration? You platform and fight through a giant map with varied environments, getting new powers and moves? Does that seem okay? Ubisoft, are you worried some people have forgotten the franchise? Uh, why not make a standalone DLC game based off AC Origins and have it revolve around a Prince of Persia universe? Make it like five hours long, like how they built Blood Dragon off of Far Cry 3. That's a cool way to use the sales success of Origins to reintroduce the franchise. Does that seem alright? There's no shortage of frugal ways to do this, but Ubisoft's only official response for the last eight years has been that the franchise is on pause. In fact, the most Ubisoft has ever said about the series in this entire time period is when model slash uh, famous person Chrissy Teigen on Twitter simply said, Prince of Persia is fucking awesome, where to go? This actually spurred Ubisoft Montreal to reply with, ha 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 ha, yeah, yeah, we're not making one, but um, Here's a shitty Photoshop, we slapped together for you because you have 9 million followers. And that's it. The only other shred of news we have to look at is Jordan Mechner himself was asked on Twitter about Pop and plainly said, you and me both buddy, there's, there's lots of us that still think it's fucking awesome and I'm working hard to get that shit done, but yeah, it's slow going, shit. Not an exact quote, but you know, that's the gist. Is Mechner trying to get the rights back from Ubisoft? A Kickstarter for a spiritual sequel? I'd be happy with an updated collection of all of Ubisoft's titles with interviews, concept art, and whatnot celebrating the franchise. And at this point, we, we just don't know what's happening. Every E3 that creeps up, a tiny glimmering flame burns in my heart, but is always snuffed out by the announcement of four new uh, Mom, Yancey's, Ghost, whatever games and more and more Assassin's Creed shit. Hey, look, I'm glad there's a new Beyond Good and Evil, whatever that winds up being when it comes out in another five years or whatever. I would be ecstatic if 
a new pop got announced. And listen, I'm not asking for an epic 40 hour action RPG here. It just needs to be a tight, fun platformer that has a good amount of challenge, has that charming, adventurous aesthetic we've all come to know and love. And there we are. Prince of Persia remains one of my favorite franchises in video gaming, and even if we never see a new title, I'm really glad you all decided to take this little journey with me. Thanks to all the amazing editors and artists that contributed to this retrospective. Whoa, and uh, make sure to check them out in the description below. Thanks for watching.